It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. William Jeffries, Vice President for Academic Affairs and Vice Dean for Medical Education, to present our guest speaker and honorary degree candidate. Thank you. Dr. Scheinman, I'm pleased to present you and to the Geisinger Commonwealth community, our commencement speaker, Dr. Karen DeSalvo. Dr. DeSalvo is Chief Health Officer of Google Health. She is a physician executive working at the intersection of medicine, public health, and information technology, whose career has focused on improving health and eliminating disparities. She leads a team of health professionals at Google who provide clinical guidance for the development of inclusive research, products, and services. Before joining Google, Dr. DeSalvo was a founding faculty member at Dell Medical School at the, of the University of Austin, uh, or University of Texas at Austin. That new medical school embraces a mission to its community and innovates in ed medical education with values very similar to Geisinger Commonwealth. Dr. DeSalvo served as a national coordinator for health information technology and assistant secretary for health in the Obama administration. During her time at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Dr. DeSalvo focused on creating a more consumer-oriented, transparent, and value-based health system. Dr. DeSalvo served as the New Orleans Health Commissioner following Hurricane Katrina and earned great respect for her leadership at that difficult time. Before that, she was Vice Dean for Community Affairs and Health Policy at the Tulane School of Medicine, where she was a practicing internal medicine physician, educator, researcher, and leader. She serves on the Council of the National Academy of Medicine. Dr. Scheinman, it is my privilege to present to you Dr. Karen DeSalvo, a candidate for the degree of Medical Arts, honoris causa. Her candidacy has been recommended by the faculty unanimously and approved by the Board of Directors. Dr. DeSalvo, on behalf of the Board of Directors of Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine, the faculty of the school concurring, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Medical Arts, honoris causa, and invest you with the rights and privileges pertaining thereunto. In token thereof, I bestow this diploma and direct that you be vested with the hood appropriate to your degree. Dr. DeSalvo to deliver the keynote address. I turn your attention. <laughs> a little, so, little self-putting going on. <laughs> thank you, to, thank you, Dean Scheinman. Um, thank you, Board of Trustees. I'm, I'm really so honored to have this additional connection with Geisinger. I have so many friends and so much admiration for the work that you all do. Class of 2021, congratulations and thank you for inviting me to be a part of this auspicious occasion. You are the first full class graduating from the Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine and that in and of itself is a landmark. I'm delighted to welcome you to the profession of medicine. Exciting and impactful careers lie ahead for you, caring for patients, advancing the evidence in our fields and working to drive the health of the community everywhere. At Geising, as Geisinger's inaugural graduating class, you've gained an excellent and innovative education, which will serve you well in the future. Because of Geisinger's unique family-centered program, you've already been out in the community providing healthcare. What you've learned in the process and the bonds you've formed with patients and the community are things most physicians don't experience until later in their careers. You chose a special school with a special curriculum that is already setting you up for success. And now you've had this additional historic experience of living and working through a pandemic. 
I know that has forged your appreciation for putting the needs of patients into the context of their community. Carry that with you into the world as caregivers. Indeed, you have been living Dr. William Osler's wise words. The good doctor treats the disease. The great physician treats the patient who has the disease. His words counsel us to pay attention to and understand the person we are treating. This means we have to not only know medicine, but also understand our patient's context, their community health drivers, like where they live, learn, work, and play, and the structural barriers that can create disparities to their optimal health. In an academic environment like a medical school, you have to work hard to stay connected to context. It's easy to lose sight of what happens outside of the ivory tower. Some medical schools like Geisinger get it and have built a curriculum that grounds clinical training in community context. I too gravitate to that kind of academic environment. I spent the bulk of my career in academics, including most recently as part of the Dell Medical School faculty at the University of Texas at Austin. Like Geisinger, Dell is community focused. Indeed, it has close ties to the Austin community that voted to fund its creation with taxpayer dollars. It is a true partnership that seeks to deliver outstanding care, train world-class physicians, and partner with the community. Another remarkable aspect of your school is its focus on the diversity of your student body. Geisinger is building a pipeline for a more diverse culture of healthcare providers, and that is so critical. Physicians who come from more diverse backgrounds will enrich the healthcare ecosystem and help us bridge centuries old inequities that divide the haves and have nots. I grew up as one of those have nots. I was raised in Austin, Texas by a single mother who barely scraped by. I'll tell you more about how that shaped me later, but first let's fast forward. I went to medical school in New Orleans at Tulane. My parents grew up there and my father's family is Cajun. so. Med school was sort of a homecoming for me. It's no wonder I fell in love with the city, her people, the culture, and New Orleans food. Gumbo being one of my favorite dishes and also one of my favorite metaphors. Community gumbos are part of a rich tradition in Louisiana where everybody puts a little something into the pot. As a result, you end up with something much better than it could be with any single ingredient alone. You can even stretch it when you have unexpected guests because you have to just add a little water and there's more to go around. And that's how community gumbo is like community health. Everyone needs to contribute because community health is what we do together to create the conditions in which everyone can be healthy. This is just the kind of philosophy of collaboration that you have at Geisinger. Just as you've had a trial by fire during COVID-19, I also experienced a major crisis earlier in my career. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina struck the Gulf Coast. With the devastating flooding from levee wall failures, 80% of our city, a landmass the size of a Manhattan, was underwater for a month. We lost all of our healthcare infrastructure from 911 to academic medical centers, like the one where I was practicing and teaching. The hurricane and its aftermath opened my eyes to the inequities in healthcare and how they impact underserved and marginalized communities. Just as I suspect your experience during the pandemic has also changed the way you see inequities and barriers to health for your patients and the community. Like all disasters, words can never quite convey the truth of it. Katrina knocked us to our knees, but we chose to stand up with each other and help each other. And on a day in mid-September, two weeks after the storm, I stood on a ramp to one, what had once been the storied charity hospital. We were working to find a way to restore health services for our city. All around us, people needed care, but everything was flooded and closed. Yet amidst this devastation, people from organizations across many sectors and beyond our traditional healthcare partners were coming together, like the United Way, Catholic Charities, all with the same purpose, to create the conditions for health. Like COVID-19, Katrina was a catalyst, not the cause of underlying poor health. The health system we had in New Orleans led to decades of inequities. We had the worst health outcomes in America. 
worse than countries with many fewer resources. This wasn't because the healthcare system and the good people working in it weren't trying. It was because we were configured wrong. We were wired to react in the hospital as opposed to prevent in the community. People living just a few miles apart had a 25 year gap in life expectancy. That is an entire generation. Of course, these disparities were partially because of differential access to quality health care, but the causes were broader. And my patients taught me that it wasn't just about health care. The inequities were built into the community from the differences in neighborhood resources to gaps in educational and economic opportunity. In the classroom, we call these factors the social determinants of health. And while they don't appear in the epic electronic medical record or in chest x-rays, these are factors that drive up to 80% of health outcomes. Standing in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, I became clear-eyed about the difference between health care and health. That experience not only opened my eyes, I vowed to make a difference by fighting to address health inequities borne by inadequate access to quality medical care and the social determinants of health. Rebuilding and re-engineering the New Orleans healthcare system wasn't the path I had thought my academic career would take, but Hurricane Katrina opened an unexpected door and I ran through. The inequities exposed by the hurricane reminded me that our zip codes are a stronger determinant of health and longevity than our genetic codes. As a physician, seeing the challenges facing my patients brought me back in time to the challenges my own single mother faced decades earlier when we lived in one of those limited opportunity zip codes. Then the summer before sixth grade, my mom managed to rent a small house on the right side of town. It was only about six miles away, but suddenly everything was different. The grass was literally greener in the parks. The streets were safer on my walk home and school was now a place where college was the expectation, not the exception. So my new zip code made the difference between a life of struggle and the life I've been honored to live with all the opportunities and experiences that have led me here to speak to you today. In some, my medical education taught me about the role genetic lotteries play in healthcare, but it was my experiences in New Orleans and Austin growing up that showed me how location lotteries are responsible for so many inequities in health. Class of 2021, your years at Geisinger have given you the knowledge, the resources, and the skills to tackle this kind of inequity head on. But achieving better health will require you to go beyond healthcare and build coalitions for change. For me, I found my calling in public health, a field where the community itself was my patient. As health commissioner of New Orleans, my job changed from healing hearts in the clinic to healing our community. That meant working with partners from different sectors, including medicine, to address the social determinants of health. Each sector brought what they could to the pot to make a gumbo to nourish and heal our city. In 2014, I joined the Obama administration. Now, I loved being health commissioner of New Orleans. It was very hard to leave. Being a local health officer is such a tangible job. Just like medicine, the people you serve are right in front of you. But the chance to serve the nation was exciting, and it offered the opportunity to take what I had learned at the local level in New Orleans and apply those lessons at scale to improve health for people across the country. While there, I gained a deeper appreciation of the value and impact of partnership on a national scale. In particular, I came to see how powerful the partnership between medicine, public health, and the technology industry could be. That's the gumbo again, where everybody brings their best to the community pot. You can do that at the community level where it's more intimate. It can also be done at the national and even the global level. All these ingredients and flavors coming together can literally change the world. And so that's why when I had the opportunity to join Google, it seemed like the perfect chance to bring together public health, technology and medicine in one role at a place where I could make a difference on a global platform. One that people around the world from all walks of life are counting on every day. I arrived at Google in late 2019, coincidentally recruited by David Feinberg, who used to run the Geisinger Health System before Dr. J. Wanru. 
My remit was to build a team to infuse the clinical point of view into products, giving superpowers to doctors and to consumers. And then the pandemic hit just a few weeks into my tenure. So my focus had to quickly shift to working with our technical teams across all our platforms, search, geo, YouTube, to help people around the world get the right information at the right time to save lives. While this wasn't the job I came to do, I realized this was one of those unexpected doors that I needed to step through. And I'm so glad I did. We have been able to help billions of people around the world with our work at Google. COVID-19 has been a reminder that information is also a key determinant of health. And so as a doctor and a public health person, I'm grateful to have been at Google during this historic time to amplify the important messages of public health and medicine. I'm also grateful to be at Google because we care deeply, not only about health information, but also about health equity. While COVID-19 may have magnified everyone's awareness of health inequity, it's a persistent challenge that has plagued the world for centuries. We must all confront it and work to eradicate it because COVID-19 won't be the last health crisis that we face. At Google, we understand that health is also about more than health care and that we have to address the social determinants of health if we're gonna to get to equity because they are the building blocks that allow people to live, thrive and age with dignity. While I'm excited about how technology may help us move towards greater health equity, I'm a lot more excited about you. I know that the future of health isn't technology, it's you and the critical role you will play as you go out into the world as physicians. COVID-19 changed your last few years of med school in ways that it may take years to process. And I'm certain that it showed you facets of your own humanity and the humanity of others that some doctors might not see until well into their careers. Doors that you might never have imagined will open for you because of this experience. And while your path may look different from what you imagine today, I encourage you to walk through these unexpected doors. What you find on the other side may well change your life's work as it did mine. So now take your education, community experience and historic perspectives from the pandemic and go make a difference in the world. You have a unique opportunity and responsibility to give back. In the words of the esteemed former Surgeon General, Dr. David Satcher, we need leaders who care enough, know enough and have the courage to do enough and who will persevere until the job is done. And remember that when you work in partnership with others, you create something far better than anything that you could accomplish on your own. Class of 2021, you have lived through history. Now, as doctors, you have the chance to change history.